Hey there everybody, this is Ray Carcillo, Reviews and Previews Editor for Electronic Gaming Monthly. And recently I had the chance to check out Assassin's Creed Chronicles China, a downloadable standalone adventure from Ubisoft and Climax Studios. Now Assassin's Creed Chronicles China follows Shao Zhen in the 16th century uh, AD. And of course, uh, most Assassin's Creed fans will probably know her from uh, Assassin's Creed Embers, where she was basically the last assassin to be taught by uh, Ezio Auditore de Firenze, the star of Assassin's Creed 2, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, and Assassin's Creed Revelations. In this animated short, we learn that the assassins of China have been devastated. AC Chronicles China picks up shortly after Xiao Zhen returns there and tries to take the fight to the Templars, who are hiding behind an organization called the Tigers, gotta love the alliteration there, and are controlling the Emperor of China like a puppet. These two levels that we're able to show off today we actually do get to see Xiao Zhen assassinate somebody. She does it in a really striking way. She has a hidden toe blade, so when she kicks people in the face, she kills them instantly. Along with this, she also has uh, traditional assassin and ninja-like weapons, rope darts. Uh, she uses firecrackers for distractions, a variety of daggers, and a Zhan, which is a Chinese sword. Now, what's interesting is that Ubisoft has already announced that Chronicles is not going to be just about Xiao Zhen in China. As the title might imply, Chronicles will actually follow a bunch of assassins, and already they've announced the next two, uh, Assassin's Creed Chronicles India and Russia, which also follow previously established assassins, Arbaz Mir from India, for who of course debuted in the Assassin's Creed graphic novel Brahmin, and Nikolai Orlev, who debuted in the Assassin's Creed graphic novels The Fall and The Chain. All three of the Chronicle games will be completely separate from each other and can be downloaded individually, so if India or Russia appeal to you more, you can always skip over China if you prefer, but to get the full story, obviously Ubisoft is promoting that you get all three. Uh, China was dropping April 21st for Xbox One, PS4, and PC, whereas India and Russia will drop sometime uh, later in 2015. Now, as you watch the footage, you've probably been able to tell, not just because it's 2.5D, but that Assassin's Creed Chronicles China looks like no other Assassin's Creed game before it. It's much more stylized, it has a lot of flourish to it, you see a lot of reds and blacks, and kind of like these hard edge watercolor brush strokes, kind of like a Bob Ross worst nightmare, I think. Not too many happy trees. But what I found really interesting is that China, India, and Russia are all three going to have very different art styles to them that are going to try and reflect the time period. Now, of course, the look is one thing, but being in 2.5D, you can imagine that China plays very differently from any Assassin's Creed game as well. But being somebody who is a huge Assassin's Creed fan and has played all the games, I found it difficult at first to divorce myself from the idea that even though this says Assassin's Creed on it, it's really a unique game unto itself. You know, I'm actually kind of fortunate that they only had me record the 4th and 5th levels, because if you saw my playthrough of the first two, you'd probably see a marathon of deaths. It really took me a little while to get used to just what Xiao could do. Also, she feels a little weak. Stealth is really the way to go. If she ever gets into a combat situation, it's very easy to feel overpowered. And again, this might have been me having difficulty adapting to the controls. You know, countering is no longer, it's not just one button with Xiao. It's a button and a, and a joystick move. And so I would just press one button and I would get hit. The stealth is actually pretty good though. There's actually multiple paths, so it's a little less linear than you'd expect from a 2 and a half D experience. You can go up or down or even around, really taking advantage again of the, the 0.5 and that 2.5 D, and utilizing Xiao's environments to her advantage is really the way to go. Uh, you know, there's haystacks and there's little alcoves and alleyways that Xiao can hide in and, and take people out from the shadows. And again, she has all her of her distractions, whistles and firecrackers and the like that she can use to her advantage. And it really makes you think a lot more and has that old school feel to it where you start memorizing guard patrols and where all the items are in a level. And really, that's what all Assassin's Creed Chronicles China is when you boil it down to its core. It's an old school and ar arcade game, really. You know, it's got... Sections where they'll score you on how stealthy you are or how well you fight. There are sections where it times you, uh, how fast you get through an area. And you get points at the end of each level where you can actually unlock items and upgrades for Xiao by depending on how good you do in each level. 
So it actually gives you a kind of an old school replayability factor as you try to master, and again, memorize guard patrols, where everything is on a level, to get the perfect score. Despite some of the gameplay difficulties I had at first, I really did have a good time with it. I mean, the art is fantastic. There is some nice variety, it seems, to the gameplay. I mean, here, this, this level right here that you're seeing where Xiao is basically fleeing for her life as the Tigers are b burning down the port of Macau, trying to flush her out. You know, this is all about speed here. It's not about stealth. Uh, so I do appreciate that it does seem that they're trying a couple of different things with the game. Uh, I like the idea of exploring these characters that we've only had small tastes of in other forms of media. Although I do think it also might be a missed opportunity for Ubisoft to, at least with the beginning here, not offer a brand new character to people. But that's just me personally hoping that one day, in some way, shape, or form, we'll get to go to ancient Egypt. And I also appreciate that Chronicles seem like they'll be easily digestible for people. Um, it took me about 60 to 90 minutes to get through four of the first five levels that comprise the two of the five game areas. So at that rate, you're probably looking at about a four to six hour experience on the first initial playthrough. So I think that people who don't have a lot of time to sink into a 20, 30 hour uh, full-fledged Assassin's Creed experience, this might be a nice way to get into the series. But of course, as always, we'll have to reserve our judgment till we get our hands on the final, full, complete product, which we hope we'll have in the next couple of weeks. Like I said, China drops April 21st, PS4, Xbox One, PC, and uh, India and Russia will drop sometime later this year. I uh, just want to thank everybody for listening and watching. Feel free to leave comments. And uh, as always, we appreciate your continued support. Until next time, for EGM, I'm Ray Carcillo.